Back here to the McKenna Center. Match recap of the Seton Hill University Griffins defeating the Shippensburg Raiders 27 to 12. The Griffins will improve to two and one in PSAC action and overall record of three and three. At this time, we're joined by head coach Brian Tucker. Coach, shake your hand, say congratulations. Chris, thank you. Nice win for the Griffins tonight. Talk a little bit about tonight's match, coach. Yeah, it was good. We pulled out some uh, uh, close bouts and we had uh, a couple guys that needed to score some big points and get after it, pull through with, with what we needed. Coach, so far this season, you know, you, you opened up with Millersville in a win. You, you fell to Kutztown. You go out to the, the national duels where you were a runner-up finisher just a year ago. Didn't perform the way that the Griffins did last year. You came back one and two. What was the message coming into this second part of the season as you open up your home competition here? Yeah, we always do well after the Christmas break. Uh, we come back. We're normally pretty healthy. We're uh, ready to go and, and get after it. And that's kind of what the message has been uh, the whole time. Uh, just to basically keep fighting hard and keep wrestling hard. If that happens, good things good things come along. Sure. In that match, was that was it the game plan all along to make that switch at 125 and 133? Kind of the flip flop, the um, flip flop them too. Not exactly. I went back and forth with a lot. Truthfully, I trust both those guys out there with uh, Derek Christie and Brady Sherbeck. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, I trust trust them at either weight right now. So that's part of what we've tried to been tried to build is to have some depth here and. You know, we lose Alan Diltz for a little while, and, and those guys are looking to step in. Coach, talk a little bit about what's coming up for the Griffins. We have Gannon Saturday night, and then I believe next week is the Kutztown Duels. We'll have, uh, we'll have four dual meet matches out there. Wrestle East Stroudsburg, UNC Pembroke, Long Island Post, and uh, Queens uh, University. So you won't get that redemption match against Kutztown? No, no, we won't. They'll be there, but it won't be against them. Sure, okay. Yeah. So Diltz will be back there before the end of the season, though, Coach. It's not yes. a season end in yes. injury? No. Okay. No. Talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Jake Beistel transferring. You know, it's the first time we've ever yeah. – we've actually had the opportunity to interview yeah. you on the air. And, you know, he leaves Southmoreland. You know, he had one heck of a career football-wise and wrestling, a state champ for the Scotties, goes away to St. Francis and decides to hang up those spikes – put on the wrestling boots. Talk a little bit about that transition because I'm pretty sure that's probably your first transfer who left football to come back to wrestling. Yeah, from what I heard, he was just kind of uh, just really missed wrestling. And I think it, uh, you know, a lot of guys go out of high school thinking the big time is, is within reach and, and don't want to shoo anybody away from that. But, you know, I think he started to realize kind of how far it maybe was. Um, and he just kind of, I think, fell out of love a little bit with football. He still enjoys, he's always watching on the buses and bus trips and everything like that. But he was ready to come back to wrestling, and we, we welcomed him with open arms. And he's a hard worker, good kid, uh, local kid, which is huge again. And uh, he's really, really doing well after uh, basically a two-and-a-half-year hiatus. Sure. Coach, we're going to have Austin Shaw come in, in a little bit here to talk with him. Talk a little bit about his match and his style of wrestling. Yeah. You, I know you were talking to us a little bit about it off the air, but it's it's a very unique style, but he can be very dangerous with yes. it. And, and talk about what it means to you and your coaching staff to try to coach somebody like that. Yeah, he's one, if we can get him to calm down a little bit, he's better off. Uh, he, and then he uses his style to, uh, to his advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight he was a little bit unhinged for a little while uh so maybe went after it a little too much and we had to rein him in uh gave us a little bit of a scare uh at the end of the first there but uh but came back and just stuck with his his stuff and w luckily it turned out well for us you know do you think that was the catalyst for where the griffins just continued to pull away right yeah there? that you was guys good were down at that yeah. point yeah that was a good one and and look we wrestled hard up to that point 25 was a well well fought mm -hmm. hard win 41 we were right there um, you know, but yeah, Austin pulling that pin through, I think that propelled us the rest of the way. Okay, hey, that's head coach Brian Tucker, the Seton Hill University Griffins coach. Hey. Good job tonight. We'll see Thanks you on Saturday. Thanks as always, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's head coach Brian Tucker talking a little bit about that Griffin win as uh, Jody Krause comes over and hands him his sport coat. We'll catch up with uh, redshirt junior Austin Shaw, who kind of got the action really started for that. You know, the Griffins were down at that point, nine to three. Austin comes in and like I said, George, he was wrestling kind of loose, and I think Coach used the adjective unhinged. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, once he was able to calm down, hone in, tighten things up a little bit, and he was able to lock in and get that pinfall that, you know, resulted in six points for the Griffins. Right. And then from there on out, I don't think the Griffins ever really looked back. Here comes Austin joining us now. His dad telling him to get over here. 
Austin, congratulations. Thank Big you. win for the Griffins tonight. Thank Talk you. a little bit about your match out there. Uh, I'll tell you, that was a rough one tonight. Uh, I was really, I was tired. I was a uh, little, little bit of trouble with my weight cut today. Um, I think the 7 o'clock match, you know, having to wait all day, minimal food, a lot of workouts, it really, I think that weighed in on how I performed because I was giving up my back a lot, giving up a lot of points, but I found a way to get it done. So that was big. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be a wrestler, and there, there's no class. Like, nobody's in class right now, and you're just here, and all you're doing is training. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have a lot of the young men who live on campus mm -hmm. living with you. Yep. Talk a little bit about that experience. I mean, it's it's literally just training and wrestling and video games. <laughs> we, we wake up, we train, we go home, we eat a little bit of lunch, play a little bit of video games, watch some TV, go back, train again. It's just nonstop, and it's the grind. Like, this is the hardest part of the season, but we love it. You know, it's no school to worry about, just wrestling and relaxing. A little bit of team building, you think, yeah. with the freshmen coming to live mm -hmm. off campus and seeing what that yeah. off-campus life right. is yeah, like. Yeah, everyone's just hanging out all the time. We, we have a really good group of guys now. I mean, we've, we've really just connected a lot better than we have in the past, and everyone just gets along. It's, it's, it's a great time, great team. Do you know who George lived with when he was a freshman at Bloom and had to come off campus? I don't. You. Oh, yeah. How was that? It was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we had a good time. We certainly did. But, Austin, I got to talking with Coach a little bit, and I guess I'd kind of forgotten your style of wrestling a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your style of wrestling. You mm -hmm. don't mind putting yourself into precarious predicaments mm -hmm. and situations. You promote mm -hmm. flurrying. Yeah. So um, ever since I was in high school, I've always been a, a taller kid for my weight class. You know that, Coach. I do. I've always been taller and skinnier. So – I've had to find ways to avoid giving up points to guys that are stronger than mm -hmm. me or bigger than me. So it mainly starts in the practice room. When guys are going for normal moves, I find ways to score points when they're supposed to be scoring points. You know, when they're trying to take me down, I'm finding ways to put them on my back because, I mean, even in my match, that kid was close to putting me on my back right there, and I found sure. a way to just put him on his. So I'm always just working to score points. I, I really don't like winning matches five three two one like i i want to score as many points as i possibly can so well, i can tell you it's a challenge to call those kind of <laughs> matches as you're rolling and i'm like i think you're doing something but i don't know what you're doing so i know it's a challenge <laughs> for me to call but hey it worked for you you were yeah. able to secure the fall yeah and it, when you when you when you got up the crowd was up your mm -hmm. team was up you know the, mm -hmm. the team was down nine to three at that point did you believe that you were the catalyst that got that energy and that mojo really going to allow the Griffins to open up that lead I, over the Raiders? Yeah, I think so, especially because I knew, you know, Coach Tucker said, I said, hey, Coach, we're going to have a pretty good crowd tonight. He's like, oh, I don't think so. It's a Wednesday night. All the high school teams are wrestling. I'm like, no, Coach, people are coming to watch us wrestle tonight. So when I was out there, when I was out there, I was, I was feeling sorry for myself a little bit. I was like, man, I'm tired. But I, f I heard the crowd, and I was like, I got to go out and do something for my team because we, we couldn't risk losing this match, especially losing at 41, a match that was very close. So, yeah, I think after that, I mean, my brother, that's the most riding time he's had the whole year in that period. <laughs> well, he needed it. The whole year. Yeah, that's how he won the match. So, I mean, right from there, everyone was just wrestling hard, even uh, to the end, to heavyweight. Yeah. Everyone was wrestling hard, and I, I hope that that pin, you know, got the guys going. So. George, you have anything for Austin? What um what does what does the coaching staff say about that that high high risk sometimes high reward which was tonight but it could be high risk low reward depending yeah, on how right. you come out in the end what do they say so, about that so as you probably know in high school I used to go straight for that stuff and always that the reason to that was is George used to coach Austin by the way it's yeah. probably yeah. noteworthy yeah. Yeah. yeah so what we've been training in the room is I'm trying not to do that. Those, those crazy moves or trying to go big moves unless I really have to. So I'm working on staying solid, and then when I need there to do a move like that or I feel it, that's when I go for it. And when I, I was feeling tired, I felt the kid on my hip, and I've done that move before, pulled it across the face and ended up on top of him. So, so I think that's my second pin this year in that move. So Okay, well, hey, it worked yeah, out it worked. tonight. You got yeah. the – you were the catalyst. The, you know, got the ball rolling for the Griffins. Want to yeah. shake your hand, awesome. say best of luck the rest Thank of the you. season. Thank you. Glad Congrats. to have you guys here tonight. So. Thank Thanks. you so much. That is Austin Shaw, Redshirt Jr., who uh, very unique style of wrestling, George, to very. say the least. And uh, But nonetheless, Victorious was able to secure himself a pinfall. But let's get into the match recap. We got things started at 125. We do apologize for a little bit of confusion on the names. We had a lot of switching around 
and uh, we were caught off guard by that. So at 125, it was uh, Derek Christie Chandler securing a 6-3 decision over David Reagan of Shippensburg, shoe up 3-0. Let me read your writing here, George. Then at 33, it was Brady Sherback, a Latro product, over Jake Downing by fall in the first period to put the – I'm sorry, switch that around. Jake Downing secures the fall over Brady Sherback to put the Raiders up 6-3. to three. Then at 41, a little bit of a surprise win. I think according to Coach Tucker and Austin, Cole Rush, the junior out of Shippensburg, getting that overtime victory takedown over Tyler Kennedy to put right the, the Raiders up 9-3. to three. Yeah, right at the end – Yes, it was at the end of overtime. Then we go into 49, and this is where Austin Shaw, who we just spoke with, had the opportunity to get that momentum switched back around as he secured himself a fall. A match It was followed by, you know, a takedown, a bunch of reversals, a couple near fall points here, a couple, you know, almost I got pinned right. there at the end of the first period, but Austin able to come out on top and secure that pinfall to tie the bout up at nine. His a younger brother, redshirt freshman, Alex Shaw, comes out, rides Drake Brenzi, for the entire third, third period third, right. to win the match three to two. Longest, most riding time he's had all season, but uh, congratulations to Alec. Really, really successful there on top. 12 to nine Griffins. And Jake Willishell, the redshirt junior out of Lake Trobe, comes out and secures himself a close six to five victory. Had riding time and was able to take redshirt junior Adam Marks down. Griffins up 15 to nine. Then at 174, Intermat's sixth ranked wrestler in Division II, Damon Greenwald, a Burrow Buck, able to get the fall in the third period and really get this crowd up. He pinned redshirt freshman Austin Clucker to put the Griffins up 21 to nine after 174 pounds with just three bouts to go. 184 pound, seventh ranked junior Billy Bolin gets a three to two decision over Junior Ryan Narber of Shippensburg to put the Griffins up 24 to nine. Moving on to 197 pounds, Jody Kraus comes out and scores a regular decision five to three over Alexi Castro of Boca Raton, Florida, putting the Griffins up 27 to nine. Final bout of the evening, heavyweight, two Westmoreland County kids going at it. Derek Burbrick of Shippensburg, formerly of Greensburg, Salem, right. takes down uh, Jake Beistel in overtime to win that bout in OT, final score 27 to 12, Seton Hill University Griffins. The Griffins will resume action this Saturday against Gannon. Right. I believe it is. That is a 7 p.m. match, mm -hmm. and we're going to have a little change of things that match as uh, George Carter and Jeff Shaw will bring you that call we'll that evening. Call. Yeah, so you're going to have George on the call that evening. I know he's ready to rock and roll. Uh, you'll have Jeff on the color as usual, but before that, we will have. High school wrestling this Friday, again, live from Burrow High School. Awesome match, double A, triple A showdown. Burrow versus Kiski. It's going to be one heck of an atmosphere. It's going to be electric. You know, a lot riding as far as pride goes, George. Right. You know, there's no impact on rankings as far as team stuff, but uh, a lot of pride over there between mm -hmm. those two teams. So we'll look forward to having you back with us this Friday. Want to certainly say thanks to Dan Flickinger on production and camera number two and for – doing this broadcasting stuff that we get to do. Thanks, uh, Dan. Jeff Shaw on camera number one up top. He did a wonderful job despite having both. There's Jeff. There's Jeff right there. Yeah, and Sandy right there. Uh, there's his brother, <laughs> Billy, as Jeff steps out of the screen. But I want to say thank you to the Westmoreland Sports Network family, wherever you are, certainly to you, our viewers, to our sponsors of Seton Hill University Griffin Athletics. Uh, we wouldn't be where we are here at Seton Hill University if it wasn't for your support. But uh, that's going to do it from the McKenna Center here. It's your Seton Hill University Griffins 27, Shippensburg 9. For Dan, Jeff, George, I am Chris Smith. Until this Friday, live from Borough at 6.40 p.m. So long from the McKenna Center atop Seton Hill University.